Okay, let's start here. I have created a simple graphical diagram to visualize and make sure I have considered everything before getting started. Your drawing does not need to be as elaborate as mine, but it is helpful to plan your Neiman network to make sure that you have accounted for every piece and part that you will need before starting your project. Starting from the bottom, left to right, it is important you have an ample number of ports ahead of starting so you do not come up short midway through your project. On the bottom of the screen, on the far left and the far right, there are terminators for the backbone. On each end, there must be a terminator or the NEMA network could produce errors in the stream. You will also notice the multi-port T's are tethered together in the middle of the screen with a backbone extension cable. Each one of those multi-port T's are in different locations. The one on the left is under my helm in the cockpit. The one on the right is in my engine room. The connection ports pointing up from this backbone multi-port T's are drops and drop cables are used to connect NEMA 2000 compatible devices, such as a GPS antenna, Fusion radio, Garmin chart plotter, Victron charger, Victron Servo GX, and last, my Fox Marine MEFI 3 gateways that I am installing today. A NEMA network can be a very simple plug and play system as long as you terminate and power the network properly. On my drawing, you'll notice the first connection port on the left shows a yellow cable going to it. A yellow cable or connector on these types of systems typically indicate that it is a 12 volt DC powered line. On a modest size system such as this one, you only need to power one connection port. With my diagram completed, all my pieces and parts necessary are in hand. It is time to install and then program my Garmin templates for the information that I desire to see while underway. Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at installing the Fox Marine MEFI 3 engine gateways for my 454s on my Carver 406. Mounted them to a board to allow for a nicer installation and if I ever have to work on it I can pull the whole thing out in one piece instead of pieces and parts. I've also put my backbone down here. I'm going to replace this tomorrow with a four in one manifold to allow me one more port here for expansion. But for today, I've got three T's hooked up that will serve the same purpose. We'll come out with the same result. Before I make a full install of this and screw it onto the wall, what I'd like to do is check it out and make sure it works. So what we're going to do is plug in this connector, and I'll get a close-up of that for you, into the engine port for diagnostics. On the other side of this, in order to have oil pressure, I need to add an oil pressure switch. So I'll be plugging this into the new oil pressure switch when we're done. The first step is to get the engine diagnostic ports to work. We'll come back to the oil pressure switch later uh, in this video. So first thing we want to do is plug these into the diagnostic ports get our N2K backbone uh, lit up with the, uh, with the backbone extension cable from upstairs at my helm, which I have right here and ready to go. So once I plug that in for you, there's a little notch here, notch there. That's where they go together. If you just turn it, it'll fall right into place. And then you put these two lock nuts together and you're good to go.
We will turn on our breaker at the helm that powers my NEMA 2000 network and the Fusion radio. Next, we'll turn on our Garmin and wait for the warning disclaimer to come up and accept. Now we will select Home icon, Vessel menu, and then Vessel icon. Now starting our engines, you can see everything working with the exception of the oil pressure that we will tackle next. Here are some additional templates available on my Garmin 8612. Some of the gauges are populated with data sets already and some are not yet. In order to show you how easy the programming is, I thought a quick easy page would illustrate this best. First, select options on the lower right menu bar, select add page, and select the page you want, and then select each gauge and select the appropriate info you desire. In this case, I'm adding two RPM gauges. Select close, and it will show the desired results. As I turn off the engines, you can hear the engine stop and observe the slight delay in response on the electronic but analog visually displayed gauges. With my tools I will need laid out and my drop cloths under the engine, also on the entrance to the engine room, I'm ready to get started. I was able to locate the oil pressure switch via a YouTube video, images on a Google search, and the text to Alan at Fox Marine. It is located on the port side of the engine toward the very back of the engine. I will disconnect the wire and then remove the pressure switch. As I remove this pressure switch, we may get some oil coming out. Given the tight space, I have to flip my wrench on each turn. You can see the old pressure switch that I will clean up and it will be reused to supply the pressure data to the existing helm gauge. This new oil pressure switch from Fox Marine comes with a T to allow me to use both the existing and new pressure switches. I will install the T and the new assembly and then the existing oil pressure switch. Attach the wires to both the existing oil pressure switch, then the optional cable from the Fox Marine MEFI 3 assembly. Let's first click into engine one, which is my port engine, where we see the RPMs, the fuel flow rate, coolant temperature, oil pressure, battery voltage, the actual engine hours, and the list goes on. As you may or may not know, the engine hours on analog gauges can drift and not reflect the accurate hours on each engine. In my case, the engine hours have roughly 19 hours difference. Scrolling down, you can see many more data sets that are quite helpful to know about your engine. All in all, I'm very happy with this purchase and likely would not have purchased the Diacam software had this information come to light sooner. The reason I say this is the Diacam software has so much more information that I need that is way above my skill set. Moving over to the settings tab, many items can be toggled on or off, and you can also clear any ECM logged codes from this interface. Now back to the home screen, I can now select my number two or starboard engine in my case, and this is the same set of data that's available for this engine as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you gained some knowledge along the way. Have a great day and happy boating.